Some numbers can't be so easily named as one, two, or three, which have the memorable names of one, two, and three. Famously, the ratio of a circle's circumference to its diameter is an irrational number that can't be described completely with its decimal expansion. So, to refer to the exact value of this number, a symbol must be used. And possibly the first such symbol used to denote this value was, that's right, E. Johann Christoph Sturm used E for this famous number way back in 1689. Since then, E has become better known for other work, like Edge, Earth, and Entscheidungsproblem. But many kids in high school these days aren't learning about E for Earth, they're learning E for Euler's number. A number that goes a little something like this. A one, a two, a one, two, three, four, two point seven, one eight, two eight, and so on. And while this isn't a completely ridiculous notion, today I want to clarify that no, E doesn't stand for Euler's number. We'll discuss why historically the number E was certainly not named E for Euler, why it might actually have been named E, and what Euler's number really refers to. E was first introduced as a constant by Jacob Bernoulli in 1683, in the same context that E is typically introduced to students today. I won't go into the details for fear of endless repetition of things you've heard before, but for anyone who doesn't know how E comes about, consider compound interest and this question. If we compound more frequently, going from n equals 1, to n equals 2, to n equals 3, and larger values of n, the value does get larger. But the final total doesn't get arbitrarily large. Rather, it gets arbitrarily close to the number that we now know as e, which is about 2.71828 and so on. The earliest use of a single symbol for this number, however, wasn't in 1683 with Jacob Bernoulli's study of interest interest, but in fact in a letter from Leibniz to Christian Huygens sent on January 7th, 1691. In it, Leibniz sets t equal to the integral, or area underneath, 1 over 1 minus v squared. And at this time, modern exponent notation was coming into use, however Leibniz was not using it for v squared, so the integrand would have looked more like this. This manner of writing repeated multiplication still lingered for squared terms specifically. Now, the integral in question can be evaluated with fraction decomposition. In the end, it equals half the natural log of 1 plus v over 1 minus v plus the arbitrary constant. You might recognize this expression, but that's besides the point. Leibniz goes on to write that b to the power of t, with some weird extra notational stuff going on here, which I can't find any explanations for. The original letter is in German, so it's not all comprehensible to me. But regardless, he writes this, b to the t equals the argument of the logarithm, which we saw in the integral. The argument of the logarithm right there. Now, what base b could cancel out with the natural logarithm to leave behind the argument? The number e, of course. So here we see the first use of a single symbol for this number, Leibniz uses b for base. And even before Leibniz used b for e, the constant had been referenced, though not explicitly noted, in the appendix to an English translation of John Napier's logarithms published in 1618. Point is, the number had become of interest long before Euler ever touched it, and had even been given the catchy name B by Gottfried Leibniz. Really, if the number was to be named after anybody, it would only seem fair to name it after John Napier, since E is the base of the natural logarithm, and logarithms are due to Napier. Finally, the man of the hour, Leonard Euler, truly enters the stage. Indeed, it is Euler himself to whom we owe credit for this notation. He used e to refer to the base of the natural logarithm in volume 1 
of Mechanica, a work published in 1736 describing the mathematics of movement. Now, did Euler choose the letter E out of his own hubris, naming it with his initial? Surely not. There's nothing of Euler's life to suggest that he had the ego to make such a decision. And of the million other things which are explicitly named for Euler, he himself put his name on none of them. Their popular names came later. So then why did Euler choose to name the number E? In describing natural phenomena, E commonly occurs as the base of what's called the exponential function, E to the X. It's possible Euler chose E since it is the first letter of exponential. Another possibility is that Euler was using vowels for constants, and whenever he decided on E, he was already using A. Although this runs counter to a popular convention by Francois Viette to use vowels for unknowns and not vowels for constants. These not vowels are also called consonants, but that makes this sentence a phonetic disaster. Eli Mayor writes in his book on E that Euler may have simply used E as the next available letter, A, B, C, and D already being commonly used for other things. A, B, C, and D were the common coefficients used for general cubics, and Leibniz's timeless calculus notation had already made great use of D as the differential operator. Still, another possibility is that E is the first letter of one and unity in German. This is relevant to the way Euler actually first defined E, not in 1736, but in an unpublished manuscript from 1727, in which Euler says, for the number whose logarithm is unity, let E be written, which is this. Although this manuscript was written not in German, but Latin, where the words for one and unity are unis and utatum. But Euler Euler did sometimes write in German. His elementary algebra book was originally written in German, for example. We have thus established that E was known before Euler, and symbols other than E were used before Euler established the notation himself for whatever reason, but there are many possibilities, and it's certainly not the case that he named it after himself. Euler's notation for the base of the natural logarithm wasn't immediately the universal choice. There were, for instance, many occasions where the letter C was used instead, but eventually everybody was following Euler's example. The famous Augustus de Morgan used epsilon for E. He also used big E for E to the I, or I guess in this case, epsilon to the I. One more interesting notation is from Harvard mathematician Benjamin Pierce. In his 1850 work, Analytic Mechanics, he used the common alternative for E, C. But he also had another unique notation for E that he used in 1859. Before I show you this notation, let me read you a quote from one of Pierce's former students so you can get a sense of the sort of fella we're dealing with. The appearance of Professor Benjamin Pierce, whose long gray hair, straggling grizzled beard, and unusually bright eyes sparkling under a soft felt hat, as he walked briskly but rather ungracefully across the college yard, fitted very well with the opinion current among us that we were looking upon a real live genius, who had a touch of the prophet in his makeup. For a figure whose outward appearance and aura were so striking to those who knew him, it's no surprise his inner contemplations birthed a most peculiar symbol for the base of the natural logarithm. As it was the base of the natural logarithm, or Napurian logarithm as he called it, he liked to use this character for E, which he called a modified B. And he says he used this symbol with success in his lectures. No wonder he made such an impression. But I'll tell you this, this squiggle certainly doesn't stand for Euler. So maybe E should be called Bernoulli's constant or Napier's constant. But E doesn't stand for Euler and it sure as sugar ain't 
Euler's constant. Now, that's a separate argument, right? Even if we accept that E doesn't stand for Euler's constant, that doesn't mean Euler's constant isn't a common and acceptable name for E. But the fact is, Euler's constant isn't a common name for E, and it isn't acceptable. That's because Euler's constant is something else. It's the name of the first member of the Constance Obscura, the constants that you're really only going to know if you've studied some math. Anyone fresh out of high school knows pi and i and probably knows e and might even know phi. But Euler's constant is gamma. 0.5772156, etc. defined to be the limit of the difference between the nth partial sum of the harmonic series and a natural log of n. This is Euler's constant, so this certainly cannot be. Now, you may argue this point isn't really relevant, because sure, nobody calls E Euler's constant, they call it Euler's number. But the fact remains, this isn't what E stands for. As a final exhibit, let's look at a few popular and enduring calculus books and see how they introduce E. This is a first edition copy of Calculus by James Stewart. In this book, E is introduced on pages 329 and 330, and they say the notation E was chosen by Swift mathematician Leonard Euler, probably because it is the first letter in the word exponential. This is the third edition of part one of Thomas's Calculus and Analytic Geometry. Here on page 311, they don't really discuss the name of the number, but it is in the section, the exponential function. Here is Sylvanus Thompson's Calculus Made Easy, a very popular and readable calculus book. Here on page 152, it just says that E was named by Euler and doesn't discuss a reason. And of course, the first edition of Calculus by Michael Spivak. Here again, they don't discuss the naming, but they do introduce it as the value of the exponential function with an input of one. A final argument may be that while Euler didn't call the base of the natural logarithm E to honor himself, future writers might have. It could have been a combination of carrying on tradition, but also choosing E as a token for Euler. And to that I say, that's a fair point, but I'm happy to concede it now that I've got to talk to you about the history of math notation for the last 12 minutes. I'm unstable, I'm feeling hard to keep the cable cut and unsort the table. If Texas instruments don't reply, I think this time it might be fatal. I wish to sell my own fake, cause I'm jaded. Hate the odds that I calculated. Press and pull and pray and push it all the way through the whole blue planet. Faded. Psychosomatic habits, why you so, so.